I have pined for and dreamed of having a greenhouse for so many years. But I'm a gardener in an urban city and we have very limited space for that sort of a structure. On top of that, I rent and it just doesn't make sense to spend that amount of money and invest that much space into a structure that can only be used maybe two or three months of the year and that I'm probably gonna have to leave behind when I decide to move or am forced to move. I have lofty goals though. To start my own seedlings, I only have three square feet of safe space inside. I have two young kids, two huge dogs, a husband and a teenager who live with me, and the house isn't massive. So my space just keeps getting squeezed and squeezed and squeezed, making a greenhouse that much more prime in the dream category. So when Magidome reached out to me and said, hey, would you like to try our connectors? You can build whatever you want, but that could be a greenhouse. I said, heck yes, send those connectors to me. Welcome to my greenhouse. Always think of you when spring comes Like it's something in the air at that time Don't know why Always dream of you when spring comes It's like the heat on my skin takes me by to the time Met you on a Friday Halfway out at the door of the car Playing so long the weekend In this video, we're going to be covering a little bit of a review on the Magidome connectors that were sent to me, as well as covering a how-to on how to build this structure. But beyond just the structure that goes with the kit, I did a lot of customizations to this space to really make it suit my rental and small space needs. So we're going to be breaking those details down and showing you how you can do it yourself. We're going to be covering how much time it took me to build this, the tools involved, and most importantly, we're going to be covering the costs. And then at the end of all of that, Magidome has agreed to give away one of their connector kits to a viewer, and this is open globally. So stay tuned to the end for more details on how you can enter to win your own Geodome connector kit. So why a geodome? Why not a glass greenhouse or a hoop house or a cold frame? Because there are a lot of different options for seasonal extenders that you can use in our Canadian climate. But for me in my garden, I don't garden in the ground. I have dogs, I have kids, and so almost all of my gardening is done in containers in this space. I rent, so investing in a full greenhouse that requires foundation and leveling and permanency also doesn't make a lot of sense. And glass with kids, I want my kids to be able to live and enjoy themselves. I don't want to have to constantly be policing everything either. So to have a poly-coated structure that has the flexibility that the Magidome connectors offered was ideal for my personal settings. In a small urban garden, you often don't have the options of being able to pivot and twist and align yourself to a north-south axis the way that you really should when setting up a greenhouse. But geodomes, you don't have to worry about that because they have some of the best passive gains that you can get out of a structure. One of the things that I loved about the geodome connectors was the fact that everything was modular, everything was scalable, you didn't have to do any math, any thinking, you cut your lumber all to the exact same length and you just attached it and voila, it was done. It was that easy. But all of the connectors are the exact same. They're all round, all the way around. There is no base versus upper connector versus top connector. It's the exact same connector for all sides. So in trying to mount it onto the riser that we made, it didn't have a flat edge to be connecting. Now, this style connector would probably be quite beneficial if you were building their kit and putting it just directly onto the ground because it would actually keep your lumber lifted off of the soil, which would help prevent rotting and other concerns and issues. But in this case, where you may want to connect it into something else, it wasn't as ideal. But it was still very feasible. We've done it. It has survived through many windstorms. It has survived snow and it has sufficed perfectly fine. So I have no complaints about that. But if Magidome were to make some changes, that would be one of the changes that I would suggest is having a connector that was specific to the bottom rung that was maybe different from the other two rungs. Magidome as a company is based out of BC and being able to support a fellow Canadian was exciting. It's also a one-man show. Magidome is not a big company. It is just one guy in his house 
The production does not happen in Canada, that is overseas, so that is happening in Shanghai, but everything else is happening here in Canada. He has made this product incredibly easy to access for people. You can get it off of your website, you can get it through affiliates like myself, or you can get it off of Amazon. So it is really accessible to be accessing for fellow Canadians. Now one of the hangups that we had found with the connectors when we were starting to assemble everything was the screws that were suggested in the kit didn't work for us. Um, I haven't heard of anybody else complaining about this, but it had suggested machine screws and we picked up a box, we used them, and I found that it just kept sliding right out of the wood. It just wasn't connecting and it wasn't gripping. So we ended up switching over to just plain old deck screws that we had on hand. The Maginome connectors are what made this entire structure possible and what gave me the blueprint to create the customizations that I needed for the space. The really nice thing about geodomes is the fact that they are scalable and modular. So it is just the same angle repeated over and over and kind of the more units that you add, the bigger the space gets. So with Maginome connectors, they have recommended three different sizes and I opted to go with the smallest size, which is the four foot lumber. But I'm also a very tall gardener. I am about six feet tall and I wanted to be able to actually walk into my greenhouse. I didn't want to have to crawl in like one of my kids. And also for being able to transform the space into something else later on, I wanted it to be of a reasonable height. That meant a few customizations. And I ended up doing a bit of research and noticing that a lot of these really expensive geodomes that were available through Canadian suppliers, almost all of them had a knee wall. And a knee wall is simply a short riser wall. It's like a little half wall. That is about knee height. It can really be any height that you want it to be, but it's just going to lift a structure before you start to get that doming shape. By creating that, we were able to lift the whole structure and create an a walkable space where I can actually walk and move around, multiple people can fit in here, and it has become a really functional, usable space without having that sprawling footprint that happens when you start to go for longer lumber lengths. And I did not want this structure to take over my entire backyard. I wanted to keep it very minimal in footprints. Now the reason that creating a customized venting door solution was important for me, and I didn't just maybe stick with wrapping the entire thing as one piece was because once this is done as a greenhouse for me, which is kind of the phase that I'm in right now, we're going to be converting it into a playhouse for my kids. And summer in Southern Ontario gets very, very hot. And I don't want to cook my children. I don't want to risk any sort of heat stroke. And the door, I also wanted it to be able to have very minimal motor control needed to be able to use it. But I still wanted it to be a functional, sealable door. So those were the guiding principles that made me do some of the other customizations that I did for this space. So how much time did it take us to build this greenhouse? Well, I'm a busy mom and I don't have all the time in the world, so I called in a little bit of resources. My brother is a general contractor in the GTA and he's got skills, he's got muscles, he's got a truck and he's got fancy tools. So I wanted to get a little bit of assistance in so that this wouldn't take me all day to be doing and we could bang it out in just a few hours. But I also wanted to film and filming slows everything down when you're doing gardening. So a friend of mine, Dan Tarda from Dan Tarda Photography, he volunteered to come by and capture all of this process for us. And we were then able to just focus on getting this done without having to worry about capturing different angles and different things that we were doing and stop starting. So that made things immensely easier for me to do. To do this upper section with the uh, Magidome connector kits, that took us about two hours. To do it again, we would probably have it done in less than an hour. It's like I had mentioned earlier, the screws were not holding together when we were using the screws that were suggested in the kit. So after trying a few different times, doing the pre-drilling, doing the screwing, and it just kept popping apart on us, we then transferred over to deck screws and installation really just chucked along from there. But that took a little bit of a learning curve to figure out what was going wrong. Now for the base, which is the knee wall, so the two by four structure that is lifting the geodome, that took us about two hours as well. Left to my own devices, that would have taken drastically longer. He had a chop saw, which made things a whole lot easier. He is used to framing. He's always framing up projects. For me, I'm capable of framing, but it's just not something that I'm doing every single day of the week. And that just gives an efficiency to it. So with his expertise and his tools, plus me helping out, it took us two hours to do that. 
And then the last step was the poly and the customizations that I did with the poly, which would include the door with the magnets and the roof with the vents. And that took me another two hours because once again, like everything in this, we were designing it as we were building it. I didn't sit down ahead of time and, and kind of draft out what it was that I wanted. I had something in my head and we were just winging with it and we were working through the trials and errors as we were building. So originally I started with Velcro on the door. The Velcro didn't work at all. Then I moved to magnets, um, but to attach the magnets to the poly, that took a few different attempts with different types of duct tape, very Canadian product. And eventually I was able to get the effects that I wanted to get, but it did take about two hours to work through. Once again, if I were to do it again, I'd probably have that whipped out in about a half hour to an hour. I also do have a blog post that has all of this information in it. It's all there. I'll leave that link down below. So what tools do you need to be able to build this structure with the customizations that we included? You're going to need a saw. A miter saw is definitely going to be best to be able to get the different angles for both the cross bracing and for the pentagon shaped base. You're going to need a drill with two different drill bits. You're going to need one of those drill bits for the anchor hole so that your entire structure does not escape your yard and end up in somebody else's during a storm. And you're also going to need another drill bit for pre-drilling into the connectors. Ideally, you're going to have a rafter square so that your angles are all marked out accurately, a staple gun so that you can be attaching your poly, a utility knife so that you can cut your poly, and a rubber mallet or a hammer so that you can install your spikes or your anchors into the ground. Now, what supplies you are going to need is going to vary depending on the size unit. So obviously everything that I'm listing here is based on the four foot module for for the Magidome connectors and then the customizations that I did to reflect that kit. So you are going to need Magidome connectors, key piece, and we have a 10% off discount code for you. You are going to need 18 pieces of one by two by eight select pine. And if you go just to the general like two by four lumber area and say a Home Depot and you look at one by two, it is strapping. It is not the same as what you see here. So you wanna go into one of those internal aisles where they have the nicer finished pine and pick up what is called select pine. You're gonna need some deck screws. You're gonna need poly to be able to coat the structure. White Gorilla Tape. I went through a few different types of duct tape. I tried duct tape brand duct tape. I tried 3M and Gorilla was the only brand that actually stuck to the poly. So. Don't cheap out, you can pick whatever color you want. It comes in a bunch. I liked white, but you want Gorilla brand duct tape, ceramic magnets, tent pegs, so that you can anchor them. I would recommend getting them as long as possible. We got 12 inch tent pegs. 10 pieces of two by four by eight pressure treated pine for the base. So now for the part that I know you have all been waiting for. How much did it cost to build the Magidome greenhouse? This is where COVID really bites because lumber prices these days are just astronomical and they keep going through the roof. So I built this in March of 2021. Two by four by eights would typically be two to three dollars pre-COVID. When I bought them, they were around six dollars a piece. So they were already about three times. When I checked prices, when I was putting all of this information together, they were up over $12 for one single two by four by eight. It bites. It, it's the painful reality of the times that we are in. But in March, when I picked up all of my supplies to build this structure as you see it, it cost me $437 Canadian before tax. Now, I was really curious based on the inflation of what lumber has become and what would it have been if this product had been available before COVID? And I did some number crunching on that and it would have cost $290 Canadian before tax to build this based on pre-COVID lumber prices. So I'm really hopeful that lumber is going to go back to that level of pricing and then this entire structure with the customizations, everything all in would be under $300 to build. And now it is time to dive in to the actual how-to portion so that you can do the same.
just a little interruption with the details on that giveaway that I had alluded to earlier. So make sure that you head over to Magidome's Instagram. I'll leave a link in the description below and that you are following their account. And then also make sure that you have subscribed to this channel and give this video a like. Leave a comment letting me know that you've done all of that and that's it. You will be entered into the giveaway for a lovely Magidome connector set. It is open globally. There are no limitations on shipping. Magidome is willing to send it to you wherever you are in the world. So share it with a friend who could also benefit from this awesome giveaway.
The joys of urban gardening and the sounds of nature, it's garbage day. <laughs> <laughs>